Hi, I'm Glenn Darcy, Vice President of Product Management for Arturia. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about our new bundle that we're doing with the KeyLab Series keyboards and Bitwig Studio software. Okay, the first thing you need to do is you should plug in your KeyLab keyboard and turn it on. And you'll see it'll go through its power-up sequence and it will show analog experience and whatever key mod key lab model you have as well as the version of firmware. Okay, so now we're going to go on and launch the Bitwig Studio application. Now once your Bitwig Studio application is booted up after it's uh, done all of its installations, found all of its libraries, done all that kind of thing, um, to get it to work with the key lab you're going to have to uh, enable it in the MIDI preferences. So we'll go up here, we'll click on Options, and at the bottom of the Options drop-down, you'll see there's Preferences. Go on and click on that, and at the top of the Preferences, you'll see a number of options, General, Audio, Controllers, Plug-in Management, and Cache. We're going to choose Controllers, so click on that. And at this point, you should click on Detect Available Controllers. And it should be going out looking at all your ports, looking at all your different devices. And it should, if there's no problems, find your key lab. Now one thing you want to check is you want to check the ports on it. In this case it shows key lab 49 just right. It's none of my other MIDI ports that I have. So now we've got the key lab is hooked up and ready to go. Now one thing I'm going to show you here is if you click on this little button here with the question mark, it's going to open up in a web browser. In my case, it's going to open up in uh, Safari. And I'm going to go on and open up the screen here a little bit. What it's going to show you is it's now going to show you all of the different mappings that come with this. So you can look up here, you can see volume, parameters, values, sound multis the bank buttons, the P knobs, the F faders, transport controls, and the assignable switches are all mapped. And below that you can see what they're mapped specifically to. So we'll go over some of these functions. I won't go over in depth. A lot of this is is more about uh, learning Bitwig and reading its manual. Um, but I'll show you how we have some of the things mapped here. <laughs> First and most basic mapping that you'll notice on the key lab is that you can map the transports to Bitwig and that happens automatically once you go set it in the preferences. So you'll notice that stop is activated and we are stopped. So if I hit play, we play. If I hit stop again, it rewinds. If I hit record, we'll enable record. And now we're recording a track. You can also enable and disable the loops, and you can run forwards and backwards in your timeline using your forward and rewind buttons. Okay, one thing you'll notice when you're controlling things with the transports, that the screen is very well integrated within all of Bitwig. So when I hit play, you'll see it tells you it's playing, paused, tells you when it's record enabled, when you've got a loop enabled. Um, throughout this whole integration that the, uh, that the people over at Bitwig did, um, they made use of all the screen feedback. So when you start controlling devices or you're controlling uh, aspects of Bitwig itself, you're going to actually get the feedback here. So it really makes for a nice uh, you know, heads down kind of uh, display. You don't have to be looking up and down and up and down all the time. Okay, first things to talk about with the KeyLab controller is that you have a couple different uh, modes here. One is sound mode by pressing the sound button. And what this will do is it allows you to access devices uh, within Bitwig. So if I have an instrument track and I'll go uh, pull up a, uh, let's go pull up an instance of uh, say our Oberheim SEM and I'll put it on that track. So I'll kind of move, move it out of the screen over here, off to the side a bit. And you can see that we've got Oberheim SEM here. And if I you know, start playing, 
you'll hear that it plays. Big deal, right? But what is cool, in this sound mode, I can access devices. And devices are any of the plugins here. I can go and uh, add some other devices here. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll just go up and uh, choose some of the uh, Bitwig audio effects. Uh, maybe I'll throw 8-bit on there. And maybe I'll throw a compressor down on there as well. Throw a compressor on it. And maybe we'll throw down their, uh, their distortion as well. By controlling devices here, what I'm doing is I'm actually controlling all these plugins and all these different uh, devices that are in here. And you can see the current targeted device with this little icon down here on the end of the name. You'll see that Oberheim's targeted and these others are not. Now what it allows me to do in sound mode is I can choose the device and I can move around between the different devices using this control here. So P10 will allow me to move around and you'll see that the target changes. Now it's targeted on compressor, now on distortion, back to compressor, back to bit 8 and Oberheim Sim. And you'll also see that it happens in the display as well. So you can see how I'm accessing them. When I'm controlling a device, these eight controls here actually will control the device. And you'll see these different knobs within the device here. And I'm going to click on it. And you'll see that there's a bunch of different assignments when you click on the little gear thing. And these are the, the panel, the device panel mappings. Within these mappings, there's multiple pages. So you have common parameters, envelopes. In this case, I've got VCOs, VCFs, and Arpeggio and Portamento. Now those will change depending on what I click on it. Now you see we've got some filter things, some VCO controls, some effects controls. If I go to the VCOs, it all changes to just VCO controls. And I'm doing this by clicking on the mouse right now. But you can also do that via your snapshot buttons. So if I press the first button here, you'll see it says parameter page common on the screen. So now I've, well, it doesn't change this display. What it is actually accessing are these common parameters. And so if I bring this back on, you'll see that this is turning the frequency control, the resonance control, the modulation amount. And while I do it, you'll see that it actually shows what these values and parameters are in the screen. So it's a very nice integration. Now when I go to hit these other buttons, you'll see now it's the VCO page, that's the VCF, and you can have multiple of, of these pages assigned. And you see there's a few that are unassigned here because we don't have them assigned in the maps. We've only got uh, three pages plus the commons. Uh, that are mapped out here. Now you have one more thing in here and I'm not going to get deep into it but it's device macros and device macros is the first button and a device macro is pretty cool it's a it's a really neat function within the Bitwig Studio here and what it allows you to do is take these eight knobs and I can assign them to multiple parameters at once so I can assign parameters and the ranges so we've got master volume we've got VCO frequency, we've got pulse width, and I'm just going to do this really fast and very randomly, and we'll go negative on that one. So now I've got this one knob. I'll turn this one knob, and you'll see it changes there, and then you'll notice that there's multiple parameters in Oberheim Sim that are all moving at once. Uh, so it's a pretty cool function. You can, you know, assign and just keep assigning different things to these. Uh, to these parameters here. And once again, one knob controls a whole lot of parameters at one time. So that's that's very uh, flexible. It allows, allows you to do a lot of different things. Uh, great for performances. <laughs>P10 on this changes your devices when you're in sound mode. P5 allows you to choose the tracks. So you can see as I'm moving P5, it's moving up and down the tracks. And once again, we're getting feedback in the display showing which track it is. So it's Oberheim Sim, 
and I moved the thing, now it's audio 2, instrument 3, instrument 4, 5, go on down into the master, go to the effect. You can also go into this and it says Arturio Mode CC and that will go into the default mappings that are, are within the Arturio plugins. That's the MIDI learn functionality and this is kind of the basic default mapping that you would normally have if you're working with this and say uh, Analog Lab or working with the standalones. But within Bitwig I find I really don't need to go into there. I can just stay in into the sound mode edit because we've really given you most of the parameters that, that you could want there. If you want, uh, you can also, you know, we haven't used up most of the banks and most instruments, so you can create your own maps if you want as well, and you need to read your Bitwig manual about how to do that. Next thing I'll show is when I click on this, I'm in the mix mode. Now, the mix mode gives me access to more parameters within Bitwig Studio. So if we go back and look at what the functionality is using the help screen, we'll go back in here, click on preferences, click on the question mark, and it's going to open this back up. So in my multi, it's going to show me what different things do. So now I've got cursor track pans, track sins one, two, and three, select your cursor track, uh, changes the time, loop start and ends, project tempo, track window, track volume, master volume. whole lot of cool things that it does here. We're in mix mode, and as I start to hit these buttons, you'll notice that my display is changing. So I can quickly be going back and forth between different pages. Also in mix mode, it gives me mix controls. So you'll see I can move the faders and you'll see that your fader adjustments happen within the software. You can target the track. In this case, we'll uh, target the Oberheim again. And as I turn this, you can see that it's adjusting the pan, and you can see it on the screen as well. Fader 1 is adjusting its volume, shows me the volume. So here, I can adjust my send, you know, and it'll allow you to control up to your three sends. So this is just a quick overview of what can be done here. Uh, the Bitwig integration is really good. Bitwig's a great program. It uh, brings kind of the best of uh, both worlds between having a nice linear editing DAW and having uh, different types of you know, grid uh, types of uh, programs that you'll find out there. Um, it combines them both in a really nice, uh, elegant way, and they've done some wonderful uh, integration here. So get the KeyLab 49 bundle with Bitwig Studio.